Josh, nice to have you here in this episode of Music for the Harp. How are you doing? I'm doing well, cold, but well. <laughs> we rarely get weathers like this, which uh, Angela reminds me is the best for staying at home and harp. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so we're going to talk about your collection called the Five Solos for Leave a Harp. Tell us about the music in here. What is the theme of this uh, set of music? Yeah, so there's not necessarily a clear theme in the sense that it, there's actually quite a variety of genres in here, but I think what the theme is, is this idea of music that's beautiful music that's playable um, and accessible at a reasonably early level. So that I think that's always one of the challenges, especially with harp, where there's a lot of adults learning harp and who maybe have an ear and appreciation for music and you don't necessarily want to just play uh, sort of pieces that sound like exercises or etudes. And so here I tried uh, with all of my arrangements and, and, and writing, of course, but here in particular trying to make this fit as nicely under the hand as possible. So that again, some beautiful music, really satisfying to play, but not ridiculously hard. Yeah, and it was one of the first um sheet music from you that I purchased actually, because I, I figured that would be a good starting point. Yeah. And before we go into the pieces in the collection, what harp is required for playing the music in here? Right, so I say 34 string uh, lever harp, um, fully levered harp. I don't actually know if it goes down to the low C, so maybe you could get away with like a 33 string or something. Certainly I don't think you need the top A, um, but it does need full levers. And it's some of the pieces um, could be played on pedal harp, no problem. But some of them are specifically sort of for lever harp because of the, the lever changes rather than pedal change markings. And I guess I'll get into that a little bit. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you tell us about the music in the collection and what difficulty level can we expect? And what are some of the challenges in each piece? Because there, there are different learning moments in each of them, as I found, and uh, they're not ridiculously difficult, like you said, but let's go into each of them. Sure. And, and I mean, so it's, yeah, it's always hard to know like difficulty level because there are all sorts of difficulties, as you say. I, I always tend to think of sort of the physical difficulty of, in a sense, okay, like a sprinter, how fast a sprint do you have to run to be able to do this? The, the, the sheer physicality of a piece, but there's also the, the sort of rhythmic difficulty or lever changing difficulty or even musical difficulty, right? And actually I'll talk about that in one of these pieces as well. So uh, I, 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 I said advanced beginner here, and I think you'd mentioned something like maybe grade three or four or something. Advanced beginner is, is maybe aspirational. I mean, I, all, I, I always tend to feel that, well, you might as well go for it, right? Like, go for it, go for it. But what I would say is that all of these are potentially accessible to somebody who, who has had some experience playing the harp. I'm not a complete beginner, but not to feel that you have to be, uh, yeah, playing at a grade six level or something like that to play these. Um, and I actually think Maybe I will kind of work my way through the ones that, that I feel easiest to hardest. So to me, I think fur lease is the easiest one. So this is just the main, the main theme, right? The that we all know as fur lease, and of course it's it's. So fur lease gets played a lot, and, and sometimes classical musicians will go, "Oh, fur lease again." But I, I love it. I think it's a beautiful piece of music, and um, again, it's something that somebody who maybe is not super familiar with classical music might have heard and it's always easier to learn a piece that you that you have heard before um and again i think it's just it's a lovely melody and it's has some lever changes and so i think it's actually a great way to get into levers because when you first look at it you might think oh you have to change this lever this d sharp as you're playing it as the right hand's playing right and so it might feel intimidating but i think once you get over that the experience is then oh actually this is this is much easier than i thought it would be and the, and again the physicality the playing of the notes it's not that fast there's a lot of repeating patterns a lot of single notes i don't think there's really any chords at all in it um and so yeah i think this one a certain intimidation factor with the lever changes but uh, otherwise I, I feel that this is the most accessible and the easiest 
piece in the book. And then Forgotten Summer. And Forgotten Summer is kind of the corner piece around the book in the sense that this was a piece I wrote. And again, specifically with that idea in mind of a piece that is musically satisfying to play for somebody who, who is potentially new-ish to the harp or is, you know, it's not, not, a, not hard to play, but satisfying to play. And so working on that idea of recurring patterns that that that's sort of minimalism style or whatever where we get a nice pattern and maybe a little bit of work to learn but then you get to keep repeating it and repeating it and so it it, it sounds nice but it's not a ton of new notes to learn and the first page in particular to have a chance to really musically express yourself right that you could play those you know all sorts of different ways those those three single notes um and to feel that yeah you're playing music and not an etude right and that one has no lever changes um and the the the, the sort of faster pattern part is a little bit more physically challenging I think than for release but um, again quite quite accessible um, and a sad, again I think it's like a nice satisfying piece to learn uh, and then I think potentially the next most difficult would be the Algar um, Enigma variation so this is variation number nine the Nimrod variation and this I feel is a little bit of a so I mentioned the idea of, of sort of musical difficulty that if we come across a piece that maybe sounds strange to us or doesn't initially make sense that can also be challenging so this is very slow right all these strings playing away but what I found at least with the people I worked with it that this is the one that I find people are most likely to bounce off of that it's maybe musically not as intuitive as as some of the other ones if that makes sense um it's got a couple lever changes but again it's very slow and and but again, I guess that idea that even if the notes are slow, if the patterns that they're making are not ones that are in, feel intuitive, it becomes harder to play, if that makes sense. And then I guess O'Carolyn's Farewell to Music, which is the only sort of traditional piece in here, if, if, if you can call this a traditional piece. And um, this one, the challenge is the rhythm. So... And I remember you learning this, you did this fantastic, you charted it all out to see exactly where all the beats um, fell. And because we've got quarter notes, we've got eighth notes, we've got triplet um, eighth notes, we've got sixteenths dotted uh, quarters, um, all uh, some grace notes thrown in there, all, all, all these things. Um, and that was a good learning exercise on its own, figuring out the word rhythm. Because if it's too obvious, you almost don't think about it and you just assume you know until you hit something like this then you're like okay <laughs> maybe i do need to work it out a little bit <laughs> exactly no for sure right and to be able to do that and realize that okay i can do that and and i think for me maybe the same as you i need to understand how it all fits together i guess kind of mathematically rather than just rely on my ear like i want that extra reassurance of knowing that yes this is how it all fits together um and, and of course i mean all of O'Carolyn's music none of it is so that the classical music in here was presumably written by the composers and and this was specifically the way to play it whereas O'Carolyn's music would have been in the oral tradition he would have played it and then people who heard it um wrote it down eventually right he this isn't his original writing um and he might have played it differently each time he played it. And so in, in this case, all that kind of exists is, uh, is a melody, is a right-hand part. And then 
I've added a left hand. <laughs> With an F sharp there to... So specifically, for example, the first full bar and what is it, the fifth bar, the ending, the so it goes the first time triplet and the second time sixteenth, sixteenth, eighth at the end. So and was that actually how we played it? Was that just how somebody happened to write it down and blah, 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 blah. Um, so with this, I think once, once you feel confident that you have a sense of how the rhythm is and where those pulses fall, where those corner note pulses fall, one can play around with it. And I, I mentioned this in the notes to this and actually specifically, I think on the second page, there are a couple of, like there's some grace notes I got in parentheses or there's a chord I put in parentheses because either option would sound great. And just that idea of being able to elaborate on it and, and you could do lots lots of lots more of, of sort of your own improvisation on this um but again i can also understand sometimes that that's too much you do, you, you want to just be handed some music to play and not told well yes but now you have to make up your own stuff um so i like this arrangement and and again there's also lots of scope to to go your own way um and this one also has no lever changes and then the final piece is the Bach Gavatan Rondo. And this one, so if, I, if, if these, these are all maybe grade three and four, this one's maybe like grade five or six. Like this is definitely a bit of a challenge um, and kind of aspirational again, as I say. So I think if you like the piece, right, if, and we're really want to learn it, um, I think you could, right? So uh, not, not you specifically, but somebody who at the say grade three or four level. Um, I, I did a recording of it and it's always a bit of a balance because I like to show off, right? And, and show how well I can play. But at the same time, then maybe it sounds too hard. Um, and definitely listening to that recording, the tempo that it takes is faster than I think is an ideal, right? that I would prefer to bring it down a few notches. Um, and you, and as I say, you can certainly play this and have it sound beautiful. At a slower tempo, right? It doesn't have to be breakneck speed. Um, and the, 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 so this, this is a rondo format, which basically means that there's a section and I mark it A, and then a new section B, and we go back to the A section, a C section, back to A, and then the D section, um, that's the one with all the lever changes. So there's actually an E section in the original. So this was something written for solo violin, but then Bach also arranged it for lute, and so I'm working from the lute uh, version, which has a few extra notes, which works well on the harp. So this E section, I couldn't manage to work on the lever harp but uh, the D one works, but it's got a lot of lever changes. And so, whereas with Fur Elise, I think if you're intimidated by lever changes, it's a great piece to play because it kind of lets you see that, oh, they're doable, it's fine, like, it works, it's not that hard. With this, I think you would have to be fairly dedicated to learning the piece to, to learn that D section because you kind of have to memorize it in this idea that with practicing small sections and lever changes, it's always a little bit awkward because you play a little bit and then you have to go back and reset the levers and start it again and um, so it's beautiful, but yeah, it's definitely definitely a nice aspirational um, challenge. But again, it's just this beautiful Bach writing of Oh, fantastic, fantastic music. So, and this is the one in particular that would, that's kind of somewhat useless for pedal harp. Like you'd have to do a lot of writing and editing on this to, to play it on pedal harp because it's so lever centric. Whereas the rest of them, for at least maybe not as useful as well, but the other three, you could definitely play on, on pedal harp, no problem. 
the Gava is is actually a really beautiful piece, and I think it is probably the only piece I haven't seriously uh, spent time on yet because it, like you said, towards the end there, it does get very challenging. Uh, but what I do like about a book like this is you can kind of grow with it, right? You start with right. the easier piece, you build your skill, maybe you get comfortable with your lever changes in Fergie Lee's, you go somewhere exactly. and you get even better with your lever change and then you can come back to this. And that this could be the precursor to the transcription for lever yeah. Harpo, which has even more <laughs> lever changes, right? So. Exactly. Well, I mean, this, the Gavat and Rondo would fit right in on that book. And certainly with the, that sort of idea of, of leaning into it um, or growing into it, even with the Gavat and Rondo, you could always omit that D section for a while. So if you learn the first three sections, you could play it as a complete piece and meanwhile be working slowly on adding that D section, right? Um, so yeah, that works within that as well. So where can we find um, five solos for Lever Heart? Uh, on my online store, joshlane.com slash store. Um, right now, it's only available as a PDF. The, the hard copy is, is sold out at the moment. So, um, but that's super convenient anyway. <laughs> it is. And I actually enjoy having the sheet music on my tablet because I don't really want to imagine how much paper I will need exactly. if I want to print everything I want. So thank you very much for telling us about five solos for Lever Heart. No problem. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs>